Axios is out with a new survey, if we can put this element up, saying they, they polled, what, 213 computer science experts from 65 different universities and asked them who would be the, I asked them a number of questions, but no, number one, who would be the best to regulate artificial intelligence uh, going forward? Also asked questions around whether or not or when uh, AI might escape uh, human control and what the best way we can uh, foreclose or sl stall that uh, that event is. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, the number one recommendation from these computer science experts, Emily, is a basically a department of AI mm -hmm. or some type of agency underneath a department of AI, like the uh, AI Protection Board, something along those lines that doesn't require Congress coming in whenever uh, there needs to be some kind of nimble movement. Uh, uh, rather, uh, the agency would be able to respond and also would be able to, say, uh, regulate companies that are engaged in AI, uh, would be able to kind of examine you know, what, what they're up to, why, uh, what its potential implications are for you know, human civilization. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you make of uh, this, this idea from computer science that we need uh, the regulation we need is a new federal agency. You know, there's so much disagreement in AI world. There are experts who say this is only going to be for the benefit of humanity. There will be some downstream costs, but in the net, it's going to be to the benefit. All of the fears are overblown. And then you have experts, I mean, people who have worked intimately on this technology who say it terrifies me mm -hmm. and it is already... Uh, kind of out of the box. There's really nothing, even in regulation at this point, basically like game is already lost. It's a matter <laughs> of time. We can try our best to do what we can do, but like it, the, the game is already lost. And I think this also reflects that level of disagreement. And I think we're going to see that level of disagreement come out in really important sort of forums that Chuck Schumer, who by the way, is himself like very deep into tech world, just based on his own connections. He's, he's very much sort of connected by family. I think his daughters are both in the tech sector. So what his... Uh, you know, motivations are, or whether he, he has incentives to do the right thing on tech, I think is an open question. But he at least has been having people who are sort of familiar with the technology chirping in his ear saying, you need to take this seriously. I feel like we're going to see those disagreements uh, come out just next week when he has all of these tech experts here in Washington, D.C. to give their own sort of takes on AI. One of the things that really stood out to me um, with the survey is that respondents from Axios, they say, express greater worry uh, about discrimination and bias resulting from AI, so 42%, then about the risk of mass unemployment. That only bothered 22% of people. Uh, I think, you know, there's serious concerns about both of those issues, but it, I mean, it, come on, that you have uh, that level of disparity, 22% um, only worried about employment versus discrimination and bias up at 42%. Um, I, I don't even know what to, like, I don't even have trust in the AI experts to be worried about the right things. And the level of disagreement, I think, in this survey and in others about how serious the problem is, um, it fuels that. Right. Right. It, it's, it's, these guys are useful, and they're mostly guys, in the sense that they have some understanding of the way that it works. But when it comes to their ideas about how it ought to be handled and what its implications are and where it, where it fits into the kind of human and civilizational experience, those, those, those contributions aren't particularly, I think, useful. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's more in the realm of, you know, a, the democratic control that, you know, uh, that currently operates through our, our politicians. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, ultimately is supposed to come from, you know, the people who uh, are then able to then, you know, enforce their will right. over these, over these machines. The, the one area that I feel like the alarmists are missing is that there's more to AI than just lines of code. Like behind those lines of code are, you need energy. Mm -hmm. Like you need, like they, they have to run on something. Yeah. And that requires material resources <laughs> from around the world to create the energy, the batteries, the other, the other things that you need to make the cloud run, make tech, Make, make the technology run. Make the Teslas run. Yeah, I think uh, some of these, a lot of these computer scientists, they show up for work, they flick the lights on, the internet's working. Like they're, they're not thinking about the way that you, there's, there are actual 
massive servers relying on enormous amounts of energy and, and just human production that is not necessarily infinite. And how the, which, which then means that there are limits to what the machines are capable of outside of the, a relationship with humanity and also with, you know, resource allocation and resources that exist in the world. So I think they're, they're, they are getting a little ahead of themselves in the sense that um, they can't, I don't quite see how machines can do all of that if there isn't the raw materials out there to make it hum. Yeah. Well, and so another thing that stands out to me from this is 3% of respondents responded that the private sector uh, should is the best entity to regulate no, 3%, AI. 3%, yes. 3%. And that, I think, is a big thing carrying into, and especially for conservatives, libertarians, who have very good arguments, by the way, about hampering development uh, when China is currently working really hard to develop all of these different advanced LLMs, uh, whether or not they're capable of that is a different question, but like it is, uh, that's a legitimate concern, uh, especially if they start exporting it to the developing world and other places like that. I get it, I understand it. At the same time, however, when you have only 3% of these experts saying the private sector is the best entity to regulate AI, that tells me when this <laughs> comes to the desk of Capitol Hill next week, it should, it should be a pretty glaring signal that some regulation, which we have essentially none of now, there are some laws yeah. on the books that can be applied you know, through the legal system, through challenges, could set precedent for how we deal with AI. Th that's true, you know, there's, there's patents, there's all kinds of different things that could be applied to this, I get it. But at the same time, we have virtually no regulation of AI right now. It's, it's a consortium of people who have been coming in and out of the White House industry that has a close relationship with the government saying, we're working on this right now. Of course, big industry loves to be regulated because it hurts their competitors sometimes. So we'll see some of that coming into play. The the uh, uh, good old bootleggers and what's what's the phrase? Bootleggers and uh, you know, know what I'm talking, what about. talking yeah. about. Yeah, uh, uh, which is a legitimate thing. Like some of that's going to happen. But when this comes to Congress, like they should know they have to do something. Something yes. needs to happen. There has to be some basic framework that isn't you know. That isn't going to kill us in, in comparison to China, but isn't also going to literally kill us. <laughs> right. Which then hopefully can lead the rest of the world. Yeah. Say, all right, the U.S. is doing this. Like, let's let's do this, too. They don't, you know, they don't want to blow themselves up either. Well, it's the other thing where it's like we actually have to all. It's the thing where you have, you know, Winston Churchill talking about the framework for the United Nations after nuclear technology, atomic weaponry is developed and saying there has to be something something, yeah. some level of international cooperation on these questions, because like the climate, for instance, what happens in China affects what right. happens in the US in a way that is inextricably intertwined. There's no way we can take those two things out. It's the same thing with atomic weapons. So yeah, and with nuclear weapons. So when you're looking at AI, um, there has to be some level of global, global cooperation too, because if people in China can use AI to hack American websites, we can do everything we can in the United States and, and only prevent that to an extent. Right, and especially the, with the way that kind of a voice uh, mimicry is, yeah. is expanding exponentially. You used to think, well, my bank account's safe because I, you can't, I got two-factor and you can't change you know, right. my password that way. Right. Now, you know, if people can call and fake your voice, like, then all bets are off. Right. So. And if and if on if there's artificial intelligence answering the phone on the other side as well, then it's just robots against robots. <laughs> <laughs> that is the future, yeah. basically. That yeah. is the future. And then we'll just be in our matrix pods. Right. The rest of us, like, we'll just. That's be where in. the resources come from. At least the matrix dealt with that question. <laughs> like, wh where do the actual resources come from? Right. And their answer was from p the peop well, this people. This is a problem with yeah. uh, Bitcoin mining too. I mean, these like Bitcoin right. Bitcoin mines were like using a crazy amount of energy to mine the crypto. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's always a problem. Once you think you've solved a problem, you've only created more problems. There you go. Russian nesting dolls all the way down. Indeed. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.